Your brain contains about 86 billion neurons, and each of them can be connected to thousands of other neurons. So that means that your brain is, well, extremely complicated. But if you think about it, in previous videos, we've talked about the fact that neurons can cause other neurons to fire. So one neuron fires, sends neurotransmitters, and that can cause another neuron to fire, or at least influence it uh, so that it's more likely to fire in the future. But if you think about that, that kind of poses a problem. Because if neurons are just telling each other to fire, then wouldn't your entire brain, all 86 billion neurons, be active all the time? Wouldn't they just be simultaneously firing? I mean, even if they're just indirectly connected in chains and webs of, of neurons, wouldn't at some point that excitation cause all the neurons to be simultaneously active? In fact, what I just described is not so different from uh, seizures. So a seizure is basically a wave of action potentials of excitation basically coursing across the brain um, can be in a certain region or it can be the whole brain. It can be um, just in one hemisphere or both. But regardless, obviously we're not all having seizures all the time. And so there must be some sort of inhibitory mechanism that keeps neurons from just constantly telling each other to fire. And in this video, we're going to be talking about exactly what that mechanism is. Specifically, we're going to be talking about the neurotransmitter GABA and how it basically tamps down the activity of neurons and tells them not to fire. And near the end of this video, we'll be talking about drugs like alcohol, Xanax, and Valium and how they affect this system and how that explains a little bit of how alcohol affects the brain. So without further ado, let's get into it. Hey, if we haven't met, I'm Andrew and this is Sense of Mind. This channel is all about giving you the tools to understand your brain so that you can upgrade your mind and improve your life. We do videos like this one, which are a part of the kind of introduction to neuroscience series, where we're going from the very small, starting with neurons and neurotransmitters, the mechanisms of how all that works, and building out to um, brain regions, systems, even um, looking at kind of cognitive neuroscience and psychology. It's going to be a long journey, but I hope you'll stick with me along the way. So in that series, uh, we will have basically three levels of difficulty um, for each topic. So we'll have kind of a 30 second, 30,000 foot overview that just gives you really the basic ideas, the main ideas of what we're talking about. Um, and then we'll have a longer kind of five to 15 minute video that explains uh, the basics, gets more into the technicals of how whatever it is we're talking about works, in this case, GABA and in inhibition. And uh, then we'll have a longer video that is dedicated to giving you a um, much more in-depth uh, treatment of the topic. So um, whatever level you're interested in, whatever um, background knowledge you have about neuroscience, uh, we have a video for you. So definitely check those out. Now, in addition to those introduction to neuroscience videos, we will have a um, kind of less technical collection of videos that are more about um, just giving you tools to upgrade your mind and improve your life. So um, we've had a video about um, different tools for um, avoiding depression and for just increasing your mental health. So check those out if you're interested. And uh, hit that subscribe button or click follow if you're on Instagram. And make sure to like this video and comment any thoughts you have. All right, so let's talk about GABA inhibition and eventually alcohol and drugs, like I mentioned. All right, so GABA is known as the brain's main inhibitory neurotransmitter, as I kind of mentioned earlier. Um, that means that its role in the brain is basically to tell other neurons to slow down. Um, so we're going to get into the molecular biology, some of the, the mechanism of how that actually works, um, but just a little bit more information on GABA. 
So about 20% of the neurons in the brain have an inhibitory function. And I did double check that number. I had in a previous video was talking about glutamate neurons, a different neurotransmitter system, and I had misquoted that number, but this one I, I believe is correct. Around 20% of neurons in the brain have an inhibitory function. And this makes GABA uh, the second most commonly used neurotransmitter in the brain aside from glutamate. Um, and if you need a primer on glutamate and excitation in the brain, check out our previous videos on those topics. And so you might imagine that if GABA has an inhibitory function where it's kind of telling neurons to slow down, to not fire so much, um, it makes sense that it would have a kind of calming effect. And actually a lot of people do take um, GABA as a supplement to help them sleep, or to calm them down. And as we'll see near the end, a lot of drugs um, uh, that are considered sedatives or just depressants tend to work on this system. So anyway, let's get into how GABA actually functions and how it tells neurons to not fire or influences them um, to stay quiet. Okay, so basically what GABA does is it allows negative charge into the cell or it allows positive charge to flow out of the cell. And whether you're letting positive charge out or negative charge in, the net effect is that the neurons resting, or sorry, it's the neurons membrane potential goes down. The voltage of that neuron goes down and that makes it less likely to fire. So that's something, that's what we would call an, an inhibitory postsynaptic potential, or IPSP. Uh, that's in contrast to an EPSP, an excitatory postsynaptic potential, which is caused by uh, most other neurotransmitters, including um, glutamate, which we talked about in the last couple videos. So that's really what, um, what GABA does. It allows negative, it allows the neuron to become more negative. And it's, it's really as simple as that. Um, and that, that makes it less likely to fire. So I mentioned uh, drugs like alcohol and benzodiazepines and barbiturates. And really all these drugs do is they enhance the action of GABA. They make it even more inhibitory than it was. So what they do is they bind to the receptor and then they may basically enhance uh, what GABA does, so they let more negative charge into the cell. And that makes that cell even less likely to fire. And so um, it makes sense that uh, sedatives like benzodiazepines and barbiturates, as well as um, depressants like alcohol, have this kind of calming effect, or they can you know, make people, they sedate people, really. Um, so that, that can make sense. Now, uh, interestingly, if you think about it, if all of these drugs are working on the same receptor, why is it that they have different psychological effects? And the reality is that the different drugs affect different types of the GABA receptor. So there's different types of GABA receptors and alcohol, benzodiazepines, barbiturates, they affect different types of the GABA receptor. And those different types of the GABA receptor are present in different brain regions. And since bra different brain regions are responsible for different psychological functions, um, it makes sense that, um, you know, it, that they have different effects, even though they're working on the same GABA uh, or, you know, the same system, the GABA uh, neurotransmitter receptors, but they're just these different types. And uh, in the case of alcohol, uh, we can look at some of the brain regions that are affected by alcohol. Now, I'll just note that GABA is not responsible, or sorry, the GABA receptors are not responsible for all the effects of alcohol because alcohol also affects kind of the glutamate receptors and, um, and it has this other effect of what's called vasodilation, basically just opening blood vessels. Uh, so there's, there's a lot going on with alcohol. But, um, and, and I've mentioned in a, another video that it's a solvent you know, this is an organic solvent. So you can imagine that uh, there is a lot going on if all your cells are made of organic materials, um, that uh, drinking a lot of alcohol will probably have kind of a general effect on your biology. But uh, 
as far as what it does to the brain, some of the regions make a lot of sense. So alcohol uh, affects the prefrontal cortex, which is involved in executive functions like regulating your emotions, regulating your behavior, um, you know, living according to the rules of your society and culture. Um, so there's a lot of kind of self-regulation going on there. And then also uh, the, the cerebellum. Uh, this is a region really important for smooth movements. So, um, you know, when you, uh, if you've ever been stopped by the police and given a sobriety test, you'll know that they do a number of tests that are basically aimed at proving that you can move in a uh, smooth and consistent fashion um, to show that you're sober. And so part of that is these police are looking for um, you know, problems with the cerebellum with, and, you know, they might not know that, but that's, uh, that's what's going on. So that is, uh, how alcohol kind of affects the brain. There's some other regions that it's affecting, you know, we've got the thalamus, um, which is involved in, um, sensory relay. It's basically taking information to the, from the senses and sending it over to the sensory cortices, which are processing it and allowing you to form a perception of whatever it is. And so that makes sense. There's there's definitely uh, perceptual problems with alcohol intoxication. And then there's the brainstem, which is responsible for autonomic functions like um, heart rate and blood pressure and all that. So um, so yeah, that it, it does sort of make sense what alcohol does to the brain. Um, oh, and there's also this effect of inhibiting memory formation. And that actually has to do with um, alcohol's action on GABA receptors more so than, or I'm, I'm sorry, alcohol's effect on glutamate receptors more so than on uh, GABA receptors. So alcohol is uh, inhibiting the action of NMDA receptors, and those are really important for LTP, for long-term potentiation which is um, basically a process by which neurons become more strongly connected to each other. And so that means that uh, that process, which is really important for memory formation, neur neurons need to form new connections to form new memories. Um, so if you block that process with alcohol, um, probably going to have some memory problems. And that may be uh, part of the origin of the um, blackout effect when people drink way too much alcohol. Um, they don't remember what happened. So that about does it for this video on GABA inhibition and sedative drugs and alcohol. Um, if you enjoyed it at all, please give this video a like and subscribe to this channel. Also hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button um, and follow us on Instagram and Facebook uh, so you never miss anything new from Sense of Mind. Um, also, let me know what you think in the comments. If you have any extra questions or um, any requests or anything like that, just let me know. Um, I'm really looking forward to connecting with you. Thank you so much for watching. Just so you know, this channel is brought to you by the Diamond Mind Foundation. This video was written and produced by Andrew Cooper Sansone. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.